Today we are opening something I am very excited about. I've been looking for one of these for a very long time, uh, which should be in this box, which is, it's apparently much larger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but what's supposed to be in this box is a Data Precision 5 Nixie Tube 2430 digital multimeter. Um, so let's open this up. I mean, this is huge. You see the size of my hands. This box is, you know, I, we'll see how big this thing is, but it, it, it looks pretty huge. Let's open this up. Okay, finally we have the unit. Here it is. Check out that beauty. This thing is huge. All right, we'll get the camera set up at a different angle and we'll check it out a little closer. We're set up at a little better angle here so you can see it a little better. Um, again, we're looking at a Data Precision. This is the company there. And this is a model number 2430. Um, there's many Nixie tube multimeters you can get on eBay. You can pretty regularly get a two tube multimeter pretty easily. They're, they're plentifully available. Uh, every once in a while you can get a three uh, Nixie tube multimeter. They show up from time to time, but uh, this is the first time I've been looking for many months. This is the first time I've seen a five tube Nixie tube multimeter. And five tube plus the symbol, so technically it's six. Uh, six tube multimeter. So let's take a little closer look at this again now that we're in here. Just this display where the, the tubes will will show in just a moment, hopefully, if, if, it, if it works. Here's a view of the back. What's going on there? Um, an interesting thing about this power plug is these are referred to as oval three plong, oval three prong plugs, and they are kind of hard to come by. I did a breakdown and buy one, um, but they are they are not easy to find. Uh, so we will hopefully the one I bought fits in there. Excellent carrying handle for for murdering people with. This thing will definitely take you out. Um, somebody already took the top screw out, so it should be, I'm assuming this thing just pulls off of here. I would kind of like that screw. I don't know. Okay. Oh, got some stuff, got some calibration data. Say hi to the camera. There's some calibration data on the top. That's pretty cool. Taking a look at the insides. We've got some very, it's very digital in here. Um, big old, big old transformer. Um, and some stuff going on here. I don't necessarily know what any of that's all about, but um, I don't imagine we can get at the, oh yeah. Huh. Here, let's see if you can see. Uh, there's the tubes, all up here in the front. Those are the five tubes plus the uh, symbol, symbol tube. So yeah, it looks like we can probably get this bottom off. Actually, those screws are also missing. Oh yeah, well, it's not a good sign when all the screws are missing. But. Hope for the best. Uh, not a whole lot to see on the bottom here. Uh, pretty cool PCB. It's like one of those hand etched. I don't know if they etch this with something and then they, they pour acid over it or whatever to um, fill the traces, but. Really long, whatever flat that thing is. Um, 
still really cool. Um, I might need to service this, I might not, I'm not entirely sure. But oh yeah, there's definitely been some soldering done on that thing. That thing's been replaced. So I don't know if that's a good news or not, but um, you know, we'll, we'll fire this up and, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Despite my most best intentions to do this properly, uh, I purchased one of those oval plugs and uh, it doesn't fit. Um, yeah, let me go on the back here. Um, you know, no good. So um, I had to resort to what I didn't want to do in the first place, but um, I managed to come up with something at least for the, for the current time that doesn't remove the original plug because I like keeping things the way they should be. And I've added this computer power supply uh, three prong plug. So um, the funny thing about these, this, this is like a one, six, three standard. Um, I call it, I say standard because, um, you know, standards are supposed to be done the same way every time you do it. And apparently the, uh, hot and the neutral on this standard is backwards and forwards, depending on who did it. So, um, going by what all the antique radio guys always say, they always say you should switch the hot. Um, and if you look at the hot side here, it's, uh, I'm putting, running that into, this all runs into this little wire here, which goes to the switch. Um, so I'm going to be switching the hot like an old radio would. I don't know if that's a good idea or not here, but uh, the neutral will be going to the um, transformer. So let's hope that that was the right move and uh, let's fire this thing up. Let's get it back together here. Computer power supply plug. Let's see what blows up. All right, it is plugged into my power switch. Let's uh, see what happens here. So we don't get electrocuted. Oh, sweet! Yes! All right, look at that. Um, so I guess a little, now's a good time to do a little history or a, a introduction to Nixie tubes. What Nixie tubes are is they are vacuum tubes. Um, before, um, it was convenient to do like the flip things or whatever, they, or after that, I suppose, um, they thought it'd be smart to make vacuum tubes with numbers in them. And there are 10 filaments in these tubes, zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine. And uh, some of these in, these um, measuring instruments have the little periods on them too. And so they'll have periods on both sides for showing the uh, decimal points. And then this tube also has a plus and minus, which right now I suppose we can't figure out if that works or not. But if I put negative voltage through this multimeter, it should show negative, or it should be like a little negative sign in here. But uh, this is awesome. I mean, it, it works. And so far we know the zeros aren't burned up. Oh, a, a common problem with Nixie tubes are, uh, they either, the filaments burn out. So like if um, this zero here had a burnt out filament, it just wouldn't show anything at all. And, or, uh, and sometimes what happens is the, when a certain uh, filament is on too long, it sputters and spits its contaminants to the other filaments. And so that's what's called cathode poisoning. Um, I'm calling them filaments, they're, they're cathodes. <laughs> the cathode poisoning. And uh, what that will look like is like, you know, the, like the bottom part of this tube won't light up because it's poisoned. Um, and so you can usually reverse that by just providing heat to that one cathode for a while. But uh, let's hook a variable resistor up to this thing so we can give it a full range and see how accurate it is. Sweet. Okay, so I've never, I've obviously never used one of these data precision things before, so I don't entirely know how it works, but um, 
Uh, we do have the fluke here showing how accurate it is. The fluke's pretty, pretty dang accurate. So this is showing it's zero at nothing. And if we go all the way up, it should say 1,000 ohms. Um, so that's, you know, the fluke's a little, little off. And plus I'm running it through these enormous clip leads. So, you know, it's, but that's what the, the at full tilt, the, the fluke says 997. And at zero, it says, you know, zero. Um, so let's see what the data precision says. This should say zero. Uh, I suppose it's not sure. Hmm. Well, it works for a split second it works but oh it says ratio is on what is what is the button back here for ratio ah okay so ratio is off now oh, there was a button in the back for ratio i don't know what that means um but we're off ratio mode and we're now on to k ohms uh so let's go back to auto should be at zero Okay, so it, it must be on K ohms. Um, and so it thinks there's 1,000 ohms. So let's set it to 1K. No. 100K? 10? Oh, well, screw it. Let's go to 1. Let's run, run the whole gambit. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. So The way up so we're at 0.9979 so this is actually more accurate of a device than even my fluke is it's got a whole extra precision point so um it's very impressive and it does seem to be dead accurate um, that is you know pretty freaking close you know when it's at zero, it's reading zero, 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 one. So um, that is fantastic. This thing is um, very accurate. And so, um, oh yes, um, so a little bit about what's happening here. You can see you know, the, the numbers kind of bounce around. That's because that's the different um, parts of the tube lighting up. That, you know, the numbers are all on different uh, cathodes. And so they, they light up individually, which just kind of gives you like, a, sometimes you'll get like a weird depth going on. The numbers all seem to be working, so which is pretty rare because at you know obviously the more tubes you have, the more likely you are that one of them is going to have a problem. So this thing was uh, well maintained, it would seem, which is uh, which is lucky because these tubes, one of these tubes probably sells well. These are all um, they're all pretty expensive, but normally they're like thirty to fifty bucks a tube. I don't know specifically what tube these are, but in general these are like. Thirty to fifty dollars per one of these tubes. If you were tr if you were even lucky enough to buy one. Okay, once again we've got the fluke set up for our baseline. The fluke is showing this little uh, battery is is registering three point two four five volts. So let's see what the data precision thinks it is. Here. Again, it, uh, it was confusing me. Uh, DC. Now I can't press this button. DC button appears to be jammed. 
Uh, stand by. I'm gonna have to uh, take that apart and see if something jammed in there. Okay, sure enough. I think you can see there's a uh, someone put a a zip tie over that button. Now I'm uh, I'm sure I'm about to find out why they did that, but um, I'm pretty worried they squished that spring or something. Something's clearly broken. Or, why they, or maybe they just didn't want you measuring DC voltage with this machine, but um, let's get that clamp or that zip tie off of there and we'll try it out again and see if we blow it up, I guess. Okay, we have removed the obstruction and I believe now we can, whoa, it's still not working, what? Oh, no, it does work, it's just, uh, a little stuck, so now uh, that does seem to. Oops, I couldn't see. That's very sticky, but it does work and it pops in and out. So let's get this back or underneath back on. There's our little battery. We are ready for. What do you think? Is it gonna is it gonna explode? Is it gonna melt down? I uh, I don't feel good about it. I feel like they zip tied that for a reason, and uh, we shouldn't be doing it. But let's find out, shall we? Here we go. Oh, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, it didn't seem to break it at all. So at least we learned that the the negative works. You didn't think I'd let you go without zooming in on those beautiful tubes and doing another sweep. So let's check it out in the zoomed in mode. Watch them dance for a little bit. All right, we definitely found out why somebody, uh, you know, stuck that DC thing shut because it doesn't work. Um, but uh, it doesn't seem it's not that big of a deal, honestly. I'm uh, when I saw all that repair damage, I thought it wouldn't work at all, anyways. So let's. Uh, um but let's call this good here thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one